Hey y'all, this lesson is for solving quadratics using factoring. So we are going to be applying the zero product principle or zero product property to help us solve a quadratic. Now, when we're solving a quadratic, we are looking for where the function crosses the X axis. So we're solving for X, just like we do in a linear function, but now it's a U-shaped graph called a parabola. We know from my previous lessons that a quadratic equation in standard form looks like f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Quadratic equations can be solved by graphing and locating where it crosses the x-axis or by factoring, which is what we're going to learn today. If you wanted to solve a quadratic by graphing, then we have three different scenarios as to what you might see. In the first scenario, we have two zeros. You might hear the word zero described as a root or a solution or an x-intercept. They all pretty much mean the same thing. They're asking you where it crosses the x-axis. In the case where there are two zeros, it will look like something like <clears throat> this on a graph. Now, that's not an exact graph. I'm just sketching to kind of show you what a scenario with two zeros would look like. And you'll notice that on the x-axis, that the graph crosses two times. And so that's why it has two solutions or two zeros. So we could summarize this with the graph of the function intercepts the x-axis twice for two real zeros. That kind of looks like an E right there. That's a C. Whoops. Sorry about that. And then there's a case where there is one zero, which means that the graph crosses the x-axis once. And so that's basically going to look like uh, the pretty much the vertex is going to touch down on the x-axis it could be, I'm going to draw two different scenarios here. We could have something like that, or you could have something like that. So in either case, we have the vertex is on the x-axis, and that is also its only x-intercept. So in this case, it is a minimum and also an x-intercept, and this one is a maximum and also an x-intercept. And then the last scenario is it has no real zeros. This indicates that it has imaginary solutions. And this means that the graph never crosses the x axis. And so it's essentially just kind of hanging up here in the coordinate plane, not crossing. Or over here would be an option two. Or down here, or down here. So anything like that doesn't cross the x axis. And that's what it looks like. Those parabolas, those functions would have no real zeros. So I guess I should be more specific here when I say the number of zeros, I'm talking about real numbers. Imaginary numbers we will get into in a later video. Um, they happen when basically there's a negative under the square root of a quadratic formula. We'll get into that later. Don't worry about it now. Today we're going to be looking at factoring and the factoring examples that I'm showing you will have real solutions. There are cases where the quadratic does not factor, 
and that might indicate an imaginary solution. But today we're looking at factorable uh, quadratics. So it will be nice and simple. When we solve a quadratic algebraically, factoring is one option. And to solve by factoring, we're going to use the zero product principle. And this says that if you factor a quadratic and it's set equal to zero, then when we have two factors multiplied, then either one or both have to equal zero. So when we have this scenario, then we can split it up and say x minus a equals zero and x minus b equals zero, and then solve each case to find our two x-intercepts or one. Some other ways that we're going to solve algebraically, which we'll look at in different videos, is the uh, square root property, completing the square and the quadratic formula. These two methods can be used anytime. So in the case where I mentioned where maybe it doesn't factor, then you would default to one of these methods, complete the square or quadratic formula. A lot of people only teach the quadratic formula because it works every time. But I want to show you all of the methods because there's certain scenarios where they come in handy, especially if you go further in mathematics, you're going to need to know how to do those. So I will show you all of them. Now, I'm not going to teach you a lesson on factoring. This lesson is assuming that you know how to factor. So if you need help with factoring, you might go back and rewatch some of my videos on that before watching the rest of this video. But I'm going to be going quickly through the factoring to show you how we can use factoring to solve a quadratic to find the x-intercepts. If you'll remember from those videos or those lessons, when we solve by factoring, or when we factor, uh, I usually use the AC method. And what that indicates or what that um, does is we use the A value and multiply it by the C value. And then we look for factors of A times C, one times negative 10, that would add to the B value. Now again, if I'm losing you, please go back and watch the factoring videos to catch you up. So I'm looking for factors of negative 10. We have 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. And I'm trying to use those factors to add to negative 3, which indicates that I'm going to have to play with the negative signs a little bit because 10 is negative and 3 is negative. So if I played around with my numbers, I would get x minus 5 and x plus 2. And I chose that because negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So it fits both cases, fits both, um, what's the word? Qualifications, can't think of the word. But it fits both. They multiply to negative 10, they add to negative 3. So I know that if I multiply these two factors out, I would end up with the original equation. And then it's set equal to zero. So now I can split up my two factors by the zero product principle. And I have x minus five has to equal zero and x plus two has to equal zero. Solve each one. And I get my two solutions. 5 and negative 2. This indicates that this graph, if I were to graph it, crosses the x-axis at both 5 and negative 2. And we write our solution as a set, and we usually start with the smaller x-intercept, and that's it. That's your answer. You'll notice that I did not use a parentheses here because I am not finding one point. If I were finding one point, like in a system of equations, then I would use a parentheses. But I have found two points. So I've written my two points as a set 
You can also write it as two points. The first point is negative two, zero, and the second point is five, zero. Both of those are acceptable answers. If you were to graph this function, you would see that it crosses the x-axis at negative two and five. Or if you looked at the table of values, you would see these two points as the x-intercepts. And then we can use our uh, skills that we learned in my previous video about vertex to find the vertex of that to see exactly how far down it goes on the y-axis for a minimum. But not today. Uh, the next example, we are going to have to move some stuff around because our zero product principle says that it has to equal zero. And we have an eight here. We don't have something that can help us solve when eight is on the right side. So I'm gonna move eight over first by subtracting it. And now I have equals zero. Then I can factor and then I can use my zero product principle. So to factor this, I'm gonna do a times c. This is a, this is c. And I'm looking for factors of negative 24 that will equal negative two. So I'm gonna list out my factors, one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, four and six. The only set of factors that is going to get me to negative two are four and six. The only set is four and six. So I'm gonna do x minus six, x plus four, because the signs do matter and they do matter which numbers get the signs because negative six plus four is negative two. Now you'll notice that negative six times four is not negative eight. So what we have to do here is I have to consider this three that I used when I was trying to find factors. So I'm gonna have to pull it back out. And Right here, if it divides evenly, you go ahead and divide it. If it doesn't divide evenly, that three becomes the coefficient on X. And then we have now two factors set equal to zero and we can use our property or principle. When we split these up to solve, we get I'm going to continue over here because I'm running out of room. X minus 2 equals 0 and 3X plus 4 equals 0. Solve to get positive 2 and negative 4 thirds. Now, this might look familiar over here in this step. If I had not gone further to finish the factoring, you could have gone ahead and solved from this step to get to that step. Now, if that confuses you, don't worry about it. Just do it the way I did it the first time and you're good to go. But if you had split it up here, uh, subtracted four thirds on both sides, that's where that same thing. So two different ways to do that. Either way is fine. You're gonna get the same answer, so it doesn't matter. But if you're required to factor completely first, then you have to get to this step. And then you can go from that step to solving. So our two solutions are negative four thirds and two. And that's it. Next example, we have zero on the right side. So that's good. And then on the left side, we have a binomial. So we're not going to use the AC method. We're gonna see if it has a greatest common factor. 3x squared minus 12x, they are both, both terms are divisible by 3 and x. And when I pull out 3x from the first term, I'm left with x. And when I pull out 3x by division from the second term, I'm left with negative 4. Now, a lot of students get stuck right here because they don't see the two sets of parentheses, but we still do have two factors being multiplied. The first factor is 3x and the second factor is x minus 4. So we can still use our zero product principle by splitting up 
our two factors. We have 3x equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. And then solve, divide by 3, add 4, and we have our two solutions. That's it. So this one would cross the x-axis at 0 and 4. Next example, I want you to pause the video and try it on your own and then come back and check to see if you got the same thing. I want to draw your attention really quick right here. When you factor, you should end up with x plus 15 times x minus 4 and then we're dividing by this coefficient to make sure that we're accounting for that a value. And right here, if you go straight from there to making six the coefficient on x, you're going to come across some problems. Uh, if you finish it out to solve it, you should end up with the right thing. But if you're checking at that point, you're going to go, wait a minute, that doesn't work. And I would recommend going ahead and reducing if it does reduce. So this is a little different than something we've seen before in the video. but. If you hadn't noticed that it didn't multiply out correctly and you finished the solving process, you should still end up reducing to the same answer. So you might've gotten the same thing. At this point, you can solve it and get your two solutions. Or if you are going to go ahead and finish factoring, you would end up with two X plus five times three X minus two equals zero. And then when you split them up to solve, you should get negative five halves and positive two thirds. And I skipped a couple steps because I'm assuming at this point you know how to solve, hopefully. Uh, so you should get your two solutions are negative five halves and two thirds, which might have been hard to see on a graph or um, you can't see it in a table unless you go in and change your X scale. So this is an example where graphing might have been a little bit difficult to see those x-intercepts and where solving it algebraically has a, an obvious advantage. And then we have the last one. Go ahead and pause it and try it and then come back and check your answer. Hopefully you got x minus 9 times x minus 4. Split them up set each one equal to zero and you should get nine and four. And that's it. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I would be happy to help. See you all in the next one.